This is Servant Marcia Carney with Escape to Heaven. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. His anointing is empowering. The kingdom of the Lord is within me. And He's calling me to the heavenly. Be seated in heavenly places, just like heaven, just like heaven on earth. To be walking in His favor and grace, just like heaven, just like heaven on earth. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Tallahassee, Wave 94.1. You're listening to Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ. And yes, we're back. Uh, We're saying escape to heaven uh, because you can. Heaven is within. And also, heaven is geographical. So we want to be ready uh, to escape to heaven just in case the rapture occurs. You're listening to Servant Marcia And I've come with a word today, and that word is that you are chosen. We are chosen, and we're chosen for a purpose. We're chosen to win. We're chosen to let observers of our life know that we are fulfilling the blessings that God himself placed upon us when we were created. We were created to be prosperous, to be fruitful, to multiply. And so as they watch us as servants of the Most High, children of God, the world should see that, yes, the Lord uh, is faithful. And uh, because of us living his word, they will be able to see that, yes, we have been chosen to win. The first... um, Well, the Lord sent me over to this morning to Deuteronomy, uh, the seventh chapter, starting at the first verse. And this is when Moses is speaking to the Israelites as they are in the wilderness. And he's trying to let them understand the significance of being chosen. And so this is what he says. When the Lord your God brings you futuristically into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, specifically the giants, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, Parasites, Hivites, Jebusites, seven nations. So the Lord committed to casting out seven nations greater and mightier than the Israelites. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them, utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them, nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. Because if you do that, the Lord is already warning us that if we, the chosen ones, begin to mix with the things of the world. What will happen is, as he told the Israelites, they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. Wow, so maybe that's why we see so many believers like being destroyed suddenly. Uh, That is not a blessing, that's a curse. (laughs) But thus you shall deal with them. This is how we are to deal with, at least the Israelites were to deal with the seed of the serpent. Because the giants, as we call them, or the Nephiliums, are the offsprings of the angels that came down to earth and Uh, married the women of the earth and created another hybrid race. So that hybrid race is one of the primary reasons why the flood of Noah occurred. Therefore, God gave an assignment to his chosen people. I've learned this morning, and I hope you're learning, that when the Lord chooses us, He chooses us not only for our salvation and to bless us, but also for a purpose. And the purpose would be in line with the overall original plan 
that God had for mankind, which is to represent him on this earth, to bring heaven to earth. Amen. So let's go back to the word of God, Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, starting at verse number five. This is how you deal with um, those that stand against God. You shall destroy their altars, break down their sacred pillars, cut down their wooden images, burn their carved images with fire. That's the instructions that the Lord gave to the Israelites as he let them understand you have been chosen. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. The question is, why did God choose them? Well, the Lord chose you because he loved you, because he would keep the oath which he swore to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, your fathers. The Lord has brought you out of bondage from Egypt with a mighty hand. And for, for us, the Gentiles living today, he's brought us out of sin, out of uh, curses, out of ima unimaginable despair. And he's redeemed you from the house of bondage, okay, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations, with those who love him and keep his commandments. And he repays those who hate him to their face. So he didn't go behind their back. He let them know, I know you hate me. And to destroy them, he will not be slack with him who hates. The person that hate God, God will let you know that he know that you hate him. And he will repay you to your face. Therefore, Israelites were told to keep the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, which Moses gave them that day, that day, and that if they would do it, if they would just listen and keep and do it, the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the mercy, which he swore to your fathers. He will love you, bless you, multiply you, bless the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your land, your grain, your new wine, your all, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your flock in the land which he swore to your fathers to give you. The Israelites are to be blessed above all people. There shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your livestock. And guess what else the Lord will do for the Israelites, his chosen people. This is reading from the word of God in Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. He will take away from you all sickness, will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but will lay them on those who hate you. And he will destroy all the people whom the Lord your God delivers over to you. Now, in the meantime, your eyes shall have no pity on them, nor shall you serve their gods or worship them because they will be a snare to you. You know, you'll get to the point where you'll start saying in your heart, these nations are greater than I. How can I dispose them? Well, you cannot, but the Lord your God, he definitely can and will. So do not be afraid, therefore, of the enemies that are sitting on the land that you know the Lord has given to you. That's the word. That's the word for us. That's the word for me. That's the word for you. That um, once God has said to you, go, then what you're to do is go. You should not be afraid. The Lord told you to go to another country. Go. The Lord told you to get up and take another employment. Do it. The Lord said, let this church go and go out to the streets. Do it. Whatever God is telling you to do, do not be afraid of the giants in the land, the enemies in the land, because remember that God himself is with you. Uh, Deuteronomy 7, chapter verse 21 says, you shall not be terrified of them for the Lord your God, the great and awesome God is among you. 
and the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. Why? Because you will be unable to destroy them at once because the beast of the field will become too numerous for you. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you and will inflict defeat upon them until they are destroyed. That's the word that you and I should keep in our heart. I mean, he even goes further. The Lord, the word of the God goes further and says he will deliver the kings of your enemies into your hands. He will destroy their name from under heaven. No one shall be able to stand against you until you have destroyed your enemies. Chosen to win. Chosen by the Almighty God. Chosen by the Creator. And that's you and I. Yes, the Israelites, they stand as an example for us to understand more about the nature of this great God that we also call our Father. And it's also to help you and I have better understanding and more faith in the God that we're serving today and now uh, walk on this earth and the various obstacles and challenges and life-threatening situations that we encounter to know that God himself has his eye on you. He will not let you falter because you have been chosen to win. Amen. Looking over at Esther, uh, I'm so grateful that God has given me this word today because I don't know about you, but I desperately need this word today. Esther, the third chapter. Um, if we look at the third chapter of Esther, there was this guy, his name was Haman, uh, and he was the right hand of the king of, um, of this country, of this great country, uh, King Hazarus. I don't know how to say his name, but he was over uh, all of Persia. I mean, 27 provinces from India to Ethiopia. That's a huge, 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 huge geographical area. And uh, Haman was second in command. And uh, every day he would walk through the courts of the king palaces and he would notice that this guy would not bow down and worship him. Uh, this is kind of going to the word that the Lord gave to the Israelites, that you shall not bow down to these gods. You shall not worship them. You shall not serve them. And so going to Esther, the third chapter and the third verse, uh, Haman would walk by and all the servants would stop and pay homage except Mordecai. And they would ask him, Mordecai, why don't you bow down? when Haman walked through. And as they spoke to him daily, he wouldn't listen. And Mordecai came through. Uh, he was, Actually, Haman came through. And he said, no, I'm, I'm a Jew. So when Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow or pay him homage, Haman was filled with wrath. We're reading today Esther, the third chapter, because we want to understand more about being chosen and what does it mean? Does it mean you wait on the Lord for everything but, or does it mean you have to fight? Do you need the wisdom of God in order to remain chosen? Do you just fall down and die and don't defend the name of the Lord? What do we do today? Because we're chosen today in a, a season that appears to be the end of the times. It does look like Jesus could come back any moment. The uh, lawlessness is extremely great. The violence is great. The development of technology. There's just so much going on that makes you feel like we're going back to the days of old when Jesus said, I will return again when the times are just like it was in the days of Noah. Let's get back to this word, Esther, the third chapter. And we're looking at the 
6 verse because Haman vowed in his mind that he would he would get Mordecai he would lay hands on Mordecai As a matter of fact he would sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the entire kingdom from India to Ethiopia of Ahasuerus and so uh, he determined that he would get them on the 12th uh, on a day in the 12th month so Haman now goes to the king he says there are certain people that scattered throughout your kingdom their laws are different. See, when you're chosen, you're different, okay, from all of the people. They do not keep the king's laws. Therefore, the king should not allow them to remain. And so when we go to the 12th verse, uh, you'll see that the king gave him the power to get rid of these people. So the scribes were called on the 13th day of the first month, and a decree was written that um, to all these people that were scattered in all the provinces and the letters were sent by couriers into all of the king's provinces to destroy, kill, annihilate. Listen to that word. We have seen this happen over and over again with the Israelites. Uh, I believe, I can't remember the name, Hitler. Hitler uh, did the same thing. And we even hear today the various... Um, groups of people saying kill the Israelites not knowing that they're agreeing with Haman maybe they do know but let's read this 13th verse um, Esther the third chapter 13th verse said the letters were sent by couriers into all the king's provinces to destroy kill and annihilate all the Jews both young old little children women in one day this was supposed to take place in one day, on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar. And then to plunder mean to take all of their possessions. So that right there lets you know that Haman also had envy of these people. He was an enemy, a declared enemy to the Israelites. And so this is the decree of death. They do not know that the queen of this great provinces, so over the 27 provinces, the queen, the wife to the king Ahasuerus, is also an Israelite or Jewish. So Esther, the fifth chapter, we'll read that and see what's going on now. Well, she fasts for three days, her and her staff and all of the people throughout the provinces that were also Jewish, and she went to petition the king. So Esther, the fifth chapter, starting at the seventh verse, it says, my petition and request is this. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, then let the king and Haman come to the banquet which I will prepare for them and tomorrow I will ask the king for what I desire because the king kept saying what is your request it'll be given to you even up to half of my kingdom what do you want that's how much the king loved Esther his wife amen so women of God or married women it is very important that your husband love you and that you be desirous in his sight. You know, be beautiful. I tell my daughter constantly, look beautiful for your husband. Even when you're in the house with the children cleaning up, put on your makeup. Be beautiful so your husband is always filled with love for you. You never know when you will have to petition your own husband for your very existence as Esther did. Let's go back to the Word of God. So we're looking at Esther, the fifth chapter, and, um, you know, Haman left and told his family, but when he saw Mordecai at the gate, he, he just was filled with indignation. And uh, But he restrained himself and got home and told his family about all the great witch, riches and 
everything that the king is going to do for him and how the queen invited him and only him with the king to her party. And um, his wife said, you know what? I have a great idea. Uh, why don't we build a gallows so we can hang Mordecai right there? That's what to do. Just kill him dead. <laughs> But, you know, no one knows the heart of God. No one knows the mind of God. Because later that night, Esther, the sixth chapter, the king could not sleep. So he had this book brought to him to read so he can go to sleep. And as they read, he realized that Mordecai had saved his life. And nothing had been done to reward Mordecai for saving the life of this great king. And so the king said, well, I need to do something for him. Is there anyone, any of my great, any of my king, any of my assistants here that I can talk to them about Mordecai? And so they said, yes, Haman is here. He just arrived. So he said, well, bring him in. I want, I want to honor this man. And so the king said to Haman, what shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, oh, the king wants to bless me and honor me. Remember, Haman is the guy that wants to kill all the Jews, okay? And so he said, well, king, here's what you should do. Put a royal robe on him that the king has worn so people can see that he's the favorite and put him on the horse that the king has also ridden and put a royal crest on his head and then let the the rider and the horse be taken by hand throughout the courts and throughout the city, parading him and proclaim, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. And the king looked at him and said, yes, I like your idea. Do it now for Mordecai. Oh my God, Haman almost died because Mordecai is the guy that he's built a gallow to hang in his backyard. And within 20, less than 24 hours, God has now raised up Mordecai to be honored by Haman's very boss, the king. Well, Haman did what the king said, and then he ran to his house filled with fear and concern. And when he walked in, he was crying and his wife said, what's wrong? And his friends listen. But listen carefully to the words of his wife, the very one who said to build the gallows. But listen what his wife says now. Esther, the sixth chapter, verse 13. His wife, Suresh, said to him, If Mordecai, who you have begun to fall, is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but will surely fall before him. And while they were speaking, the king eunuchs came to take him to the dinner with Esther and the king. You know, at the end of that evening, Haman was dead. The king killed him uh, because he tried to pet petition and uh, the queen, but the king took it the other way that he was trying to kill the queen so he killed him instantly the most important thing in Esther the 8th chapter starting in verse 7 the king said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew that I have given Esther the house of Haman and they have hanged him on the very gallows that he was going to hang you on now write a decree concerning the Jews as you please in the king's name. And here's what Mordecai wrote. Mordecai wrote to all 27 provinces from India to Ethiopia. This is what he wrote. That the Jews who were in every city to gather together and protect their lives to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions on the one day, the 13th day, that Haman was going to have all the Jews 
destroyed. They were now given the right to defend themselves. And here's what happened on that 13th day. First of all, before the 13th day, when people saw that Mordecai had been raised up, fear, fear fell upon them and they converted to become Jews. Wow. So when you walk in the calling of being chosen, you, by your very life and the presence of God in your life, you will cause people to convert, to become believers of Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is what happened. And so on the 13th, the Jews fought and defended their lives. And in Shushan, which is where the capital was, 500 men were killed. And over in other provinces, uh, 75,000 enemy were killed. But notice this, the Jews never touched their possessions. They never plundered their possessions. The Jews only defended themselves. They did not take their possessions. They didn't touch it. If we go to the 21st, a verse of Esther, the ninth chapter, we will see that Mordecai decreed that the 14th and the 15th be a celebration. The 12th month that they are to celebrate forever. The fact that the Jews were able to defend themselves, were able to have rest from their enemies that sorrow was turned into joy and mourning into a holiday. I declare and decree as a servant of the Most High that you and I shall also live in victory. Amen. Because this is what the Lord himself has preordained for you as a chosen vessel of the Most High. We shall go from sorrow to joy from morning to a holiday. Amen. And if we go over to 1 Peter, the second chapter, verse number nine, just so you and I as prior Gentiles can remember and understand what Jesus has done for us. You are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, God's special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you, Jesus called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And remember, we were not a people, but we now are of God. Amen. We did not have mercy before. Notice what God said to the Jews. He told them to destroy them utterly. But look at us now. We have been chosen to be victorious. Uh, you, It doesn't matter, Jew, Gentile, we are created in the image of God. Amen. You're not, uh, you're not of the seed of the serpent. You're not uh, of the seed of the Nephilim. No, you were made in the image of God after his own likeness. Amen. But you were separated from the Lord. And Jesus came and he, he effectuated the plan that was before uh, even the foundation of the world. Over in uh, First Peter, the first chapter, it says how we were redeemed. Amen. Let me go find that. Yeah, knowing that you were not redeemed, okay, with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. No, we have been redeemed with the precious blood of the Christ, of the Messiah, of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Indeed, was foredained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in this last times for us, who through Jesus we believe in God, who raised Jesus from the dead and gave Jesus glory so that your faith and hope are in God. We have been purified. See, we are purifying our souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit. And we, we show that by sincere love of each other, loving one another fervently with a pure heart. Why? Because we've been born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the word of God, amen, which lives and abides 
forever. I'm so excited. It's hard for me to calm down. <laughs> hey, man, I, I just want you to know that we are sojourning on this earth as pilgrims. And so therefore abstain from fleshly lust, which war against our soul. Amen. And uh, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. And over in the first Peter, third chapter, verse number 15, I'm going to end it there. And it says, sanctify the Lord God to your hearts. So always be ready to give a defense uh, to everyone who asks you, what is the reason for your hope that's in you? With meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you, uh, they, they will revile, uh, they will see your good work, amen, uh, in Christ. Because see, Christ suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Holy Spirit. I will stop there. I love you, but Jesus proved he loved you a whole lot more than I know how. Holy Spirit loved you because he's helping us daily. He's, you know, God the Father loves us because of the great plan that you and I are a part of. And so I say, uh, walk in your calling. Be chosen because you are. And remember, you were chosen to win. God bless you. Love you. Bye. See you next time.